Good morning and welcome to Fethi Rose Africa. I have the privilege this morning to be with the senior pastor of the Father's Church in Dallas, Texas, the apostle on whose shoulder God has placed the responsibility of the Saints Network. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I am so honored to be with you again this morning. I want you to just tell us a little bit of how God brought you into the ministry of intercession and seeking the Lord and the teachings of the saints. Certainly. I'd be honored. It's a blessing to be here with you today. Um, we uh, <clears throat> we were a, an established church and um, we were doing all the things in our church that were uh, expected of churches and we were growing uh, our departments various ministries within the church were all doing very well and um, we were preaching Jesus we were preaching being baptized in the Holy Spirit we were preaching divine healing we were preaching the second coming we were preaching all the things that are important for every believer to know and God was blessing but then he put in my heart that there was more of him than we had known. And um, he asked if I would be willing to seek him for that. Well, I had no idea what that meant. I thought, as so many churches think, that what we were doing, since it had the blessing of God upon it, was all there was. We were just waiting or the rapture but God said seek me and so we did and um, 20 years ago our congregation began to fast and to seek the Lord for what we didn't know mm -hmm. it was just more of God and um, through a secret series of events God touched us he put his hand upon us mightily he changed us he called us to be intercessors he gave us the gift of diversities of tongues. He uh, opened up the spirit realm to us in a way we hadn't known. And he began to show us things in his word, in his word, not twisting of the word, but in his word that were there for everyone to see, but we'd never seen them before. So it was really a hunger for more of God that was directed by him. In, it was his invitation. He didn't say, will you seek me because I want to do this, 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 this. He just said, there's more of me, will you seek me? And then when we said yes, he then opened his heart to us. Now, how far has the work of the saints gone in other nations of the world? Well, that's a that's a very good question because um, we as a congregation here in Dallas we simply begin to pray our people prayed in the night in the day at different times as the Lord would direct but we prayed a lot and we prayed for years here where we didn't go anywhere else we didn't go into any other churches we didn't go any other nations in fact seven years went by until God opened the door for us by his divine hand to go into France. And then the doors in Western Europe opened and um, we began to see God make connections with us, with people who were hungry there. And um, in addition, God began to open doors in Uganda and uh, in India uh, and those were the first breakthrough points but it was God that opened those doors we didn't say well we're going to publicize you know we're going to make um, some kind of a commercial to to recruit people or to make comment contact it was just God who did it and currently uh, since that time which would be about 13 years ago uh, the Lord has opened up over 30, over 30 nations where there are 
active points of um, prayer and active points of partnering with the saints, including the blessing of having met you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's Nigeria. Yes. We give God praise. Now, if you are to speak to the body of Christ, I mean, there's so many group of believers who will like your church and who need to know what to do to seek the heart of the Father and then bring to bear his kingdom and will on earth as it should be in heaven. What will be your words to pastors and leaders and committed believers who are still at the primary level that needs to move up closer? Okay. I appreciate that question. Um, I think in the heart of any pastor is the desire to see what you're doing for the Lord acknowledged. In the heart of any pastor, you equate uh, success by numbers or by expansion of your church where people come to you and uh, look to you for help. You, you, you equate that as being all that you're there to do. You're there to serve the people. Um, and, and you think that <clears throat> numerical growth, financial blessing, is really the sign of what God's best is. And I do believe the church should be blessed. I do believe that God wants to bring people into the kingdom. But I think that what every pastor needs to do is say, I'm here to serve God. I'm here to welcome his kingdom to earth. That's what Jesus asked his, his disciples to do. They said, teach us to pray, Lord. And he didn't say, well, when you pray, know that you have power and know that you have um, uh, a message that can reach lots of people to bring them in. Uh, you don't pray that God will bless you. You don't pray that God... He didn't say any of those things. He said, when you pray, our Father, we need to know God as a Father. We need to be sons, not just parts of the family. You know, I'm sure in Nigeria, as well as here in the United States, there are, in every family, there are those that are just part of the family, mm -hmm. and then there are those who accept responsibility for their father. Mm -hmm. And God says, we need to know our father, we need to be sons. We need to be praying that his kingdom would come, that his will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we need to know that his name is holy or saintly, uh, hagios, that God wants to restore his kingdom on the earth. And, um, and that can only come through seeking God and knowing him. But a success for any pastor is to not worry about what other people think, to be aligned with the word of God, to be a person of prayer, and to teach your people to pray to seek the face of God. That's what the church should be known for. Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. He didn't say, if you're really serving me, my house should be called a house where there are thousands of people coming. He didn't say my house should be a house that is um, glorifying a man. He said, my house should be a prayer house. And when a pastor does that, when he patterns prayer as a son before the Father, then his people will also follow that. And that's what our world really needs. We don't need bigger churches. We need people who are asking God for his kingdom to come. And that's what the scripture says. So I would say to any pastor, Get before God, seek his heart, pray. Don't ask him to bring you a lot of people. Ask him how you can bless him. And again, that is so important. And I, I know what I'm talking about because, listen, society judges a pastor 
by what kind of car they drive, how much money they have, how big their church is, how many people come and bow down before you. That's how society judges a pastor. And how God judges a pastor is, is this man or woman seeking my heart? Mm -hmm. And um, that's borne out by the scripture. So um, I would just encourage any young pastor to say, who do I serve? Do I serve God? Do I serve myself? Do I serve the people? So that was a long answer. Uh, thank you Somewhere so much. in there is the and answer. It's, and it's very <laughs> deep. And I believe it's very, very clear that every minister of God should seek God first and his kingdom, and every other thing will be taken care of. Finally, sir, what is the next step for the Saint Network? I'm aware you are going to Switzerland some few days from now. What are the things that the Saint Networks are working on in the next few years? Well, uh, that's, thank you for that question. We're very thankful that God always opens the door. Again, we don't sit down and plan out a strategy. We need to go to this nation. We need to go to this nation. We don't do that. That's man's ways. We want to follow where the Spirit says to go. You know, the Bible talks about the Apostle Paul and the plans that he made, mm -hmm. and then God and his Holy Spirit on four occasions changed those plans and mm -hmm. says, no, no, you don't need to go there. You need to go over here. Mm -hmm. So the next step for us is next week, in fact, we will be in Switzerland uh, where there are a number of saints uh, who are praying, interceding, but we're going to people that we've never met before. Uh, many of them speak Spanish and they're business people who came from Latin American countries to work in Switzerland. They love the Lord. They started churches there. And um, there are people all over, this, over Switzerland who want a deeper work from God who are Latin-speaking people, Spanish-speaking people. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be going to a number of churches. God opened that door miraculously. Uh, shortly after that, we'll be going into France for our National Saints Network Seminar, and it's going to be held near Nice in the southern part of France. And there are a lot of different intercessory groups all over France that God has called. And you know, once a year, we convene as many of those people as can to a central location. We pray together. We seek God. We encourage one another. And, um, and then throughout the year, there are a lot of things like that that God, um, that God makes a way for. And, um, but in the middle of all of that, we're praying for you. Amen. Thank you. We're mm -hmm. praying for the vision that God has given to you for um, not only your country of Nigeria, but the, the many countries that um, God has given you contact with. And um, we're believing that God is raising up a great number of intercessors that will stand together with you Amen. for the continent of Africa to know the visitation of God's Spirit. So Amen. that's also what we're going to be doing here. Thank you. Is praying for, for Africa. Thank you so, so much, sir. We thank God for the opportunity we have to be with this great vessel of the kingdom in our generation. I just want you to give a word of prayer to the people, to the sir. viewers and the ministers of God out there. I would be honored. Yes, sir. Just stretch forth your heart, your hand toward us right now. Yeah, There's no distance between us and you and the Lord. God is with you right there. Yes, Heavenly Father, I declare over every person who is watching this video presentation you've ordained us father yes, lord. you have arranged our paths the steps of a righteous person are ordered of you yes, lord. and there's some reason that this dear one has watched this broadcast yes, lord. we declare and agree that the spirit of god would come upon them even now Amen. that you would fill that room wherever they're watching wherever that might be 
and that you would put a fire in their heart Amen. to seek your face, Father, Amen. to know you, Amen. and that you would cause them to have an encounter with you that is beyond anything they've ever known. Amen. And may they have a hunger for you Amen. and the realization that there's always more of you Amen. than what they've known to this point in their life. Amen. Bless them Amen. with a deeper walk in you. Amen. And I speak blessing again over my brother, Pastor Falloden, over his family, over his church, over those that are aligned with him. And we speak into the vision you've given him to raise up intercessors across the belt of Africa. And Father, we declare that you have given this vision. He will not need to fight in this battle, for the battle is the Lord's. Yes, Lord. And we thank you for this, Father. You, it's not our work. It's your work. Yes, Let your will be done. Amen. And we thank you for it, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, sir. God bless you, so brother. to be here. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Amen. Yeah.